In this video I want to go over all strengths and weaknesses of Allied aircraft of the Battle of Bodenplatte DLC for IL-2 Great Battles. I did a similar video already for the Luftwaffe planes, but today, like I said, for the Allied plane. And I want to start with the Royal Air Force aircraft. And they come with two fighters, the Spitfire Mark 9 and the Tempest Mark 5. And I want to start with the Spitfire. Yeah, the Spitfire is a Spitfire, so a very good climb rate, very good maneuverability, in comparison kinda slow. Noteworthy is the new possibility to power the plane with 150 octane fuel, which makes the Spitfire even more Spitfirey. Monstrous climb rate and acceleration and still kinda meh in the speed department. The BF-19 G14 for example is still faster. But combined with clip wings for example you get a really fast nimble aircraft. The elevator is super sensitive and it's easy to pull more G's than your pilot can handle. Therefore it needs to be flown very carefully. The spits aren't equipped with a G suit which doesn't help. But other than that it's a fantastic aircraft to fly, feels good. You can pick the Spitfire for like intercept missions where you need that monstrous climb rate, but like chasing down an enemy is not a thing in the Spitfire. Tempest Mark 5. Eat souls for a living is together with the DC powered K4 the fastest thing in the simulation. 620 kph on the deck with a monstrous acceleration, turn rate and dive capabilities. Armed with four 20mm Hispano cannons which lets Doras and Antons pale up. The Tempers can catch anything in a straight line. The DC powered K4 is only on the deck and above 6 km faster than the Tempest. The only drawback is the slow climb rate, which is comparable with the BF-1 G4. Good in 1943, but nothing to talk about in 44 and 45. All German planes except the A8 outclimb the Tempest easily in a sustained climb. But to do that the Germans obviously have to be out of gun range and that is easier said than done. The Tempest can turn very very well too, which is a bit surprising I have to say. Another drawback is that the Tempest pilot has no G suit causing very very sudden blackouts and G locks when the aircraft isn't flown carefully. In missions in early 44 it's possible that you are limited to fly the Tempest with an earlier engine modification which limits your manifold pressure to 9 psi. But don't worry, the advantage in level speed get only greater at that point because you don't face K4s and D9s, generally speaking at that stage. In early 44 you're only fighting A8s and G14s, both much slower than the Tempest even at 9 psi. So fly the Tempest a little bit like a jet since it has the same advantages. You can fly extremely fast and the enemy can't touch you. Don't climb too much, don't turn so much. I mean, you can turn, but usually that gets you in more trouble and yeah, you're blacking out. So keep your speed. And now we are switching to the US Air Force and starting with the P-47D. And the Thunderbolt is my little guilty pleasure. Surely not the most competitive aircraft, but hella fun to fly. The 47 has plenty of counterattack options, which allows the 47 to be the backbone of the Allied Striker Force. On altitudes below 20,000 feet, 6,000 meters, the 47 is slower than most German fighters, but above the 47 starts to shine. Especially the climb rate gets very good in relation to the opposition and the aircraft is faster. That's all very dependent on the fuel load, so I wouldn't recommend using more than 900 liters of fuel at takeoff, otherwise the performance suffers very hard. 900 liters are more than enough for a 1 hour sortie with moderate combat. When you need to evade an attack, the G suit comes in handy. You can easy pull like 1 G more than the opposition can, which is quite considerable. The downside of the 47 are yeah, kinda well known. The aircraft is heavy, sluggish and is hard to control in a maneuvering fight when the aircraft is still very heavy. So still had or has a lot of fuel and ammo. So you better stay clear and work in a team of at least two. Other drawbacks are the limited supply of water methanol mix for the highly effective injection. You only have like 20 minutes of supply. And the game's restrictive handling of the engine limitations is capping the 47's potential. The damage model isn't very kind to the 47 as well, while the 47 sometimes can take quite a bit of punishment, sometimes only one bullet to the engine stops the entire thing. 
but nonetheless I really like to use the 47 as some kind of high altitude suppression fighter. The plane overall isn't very competitive, but the satisfaction of hosing down a 109 with 850 kels is great. P-51D Mustang To my own surprise the 51 is my favorite aircraft of Bodenplatte. Before the release I thought the 51 will be a kinda meh soulless aircraft, which is not fast enough to compete against the Doro and K4 and at the same time boring to fly. I'm happy to say that I was wrong. The aircraft comes similar to the Spitfire with two fuel qualities, 150 octane giving you more performance. The 100 octane version is already quite fast, much faster than the D14 and A8 and almost matching the DB powered K4 and Dora. Beyond that the 51 has the most amazing energy tension at high speed, losing speed very very slowly coming from altitude. So even when on paper slower than the opposition sometimes, it's really hard to get away from you in a straight line. With 150 octane the Mustang is actually faster than most German fighters, only a bit slower than the DC powered K4 below 6000 meters and above that both variants of the 51 are faster than anything the Germans can throw at them. Well, except the 262 of course. Additionally, the Mustang is, depending on fuel load, very maneuverable at a wide variety of speeds, outmaneuvering most German planes in turning maneuvers, except the 190s at very high speeds and the BF-109 G14 at low speeds. The 51 is coming with the G-suit as well, helping the pilot enormously in a maneuvering fight. The 51 rolls very well and better than 109s, but worse than 190s at higher speeds. The 51 loses the wheel door covers when flying faster than 505 miles per hour. That impairs the aerodynamics massively. Another drawback, if you even want to call it a drawback, is that the rudder needs to be managed constantly, either by pushing the right amount of rudder or trimming the aircraft constantly. Otherwise you lose a massive amount of speed. Every bit of turbulence is basically destroying the good aerodynamics of the very slippy airframe. P38 the P-38J is one of the most interesting planes of the simulation, for various reasons. First, it's a twin-engined single-seat fighter with a turbo supercharger and second, the propellers are counter-rotating and are eliminating most of the perceived torque. The turbochargers are giving the aircraft excellent performance at high altitudes. The 38 is faster than the G-14 above 6000 meters and faster than the D-9 above 7000 meters and is climbing very well at those altitudes. Beyond that, the aircraft features hydraulically boosted ailerons, giving the aircraft an amazing roll rate at a large variety of speeds, which makes following targets or lining up shots very easy. The armament is fantastic, consisting of four 50 cal machine guns and one 20 mm, all centered and packed in the nose, creating a credible gun platform. For that reason the 38 is very hard to outclimb since the effective gun range is so large. The 38 isn't shabby in a turn either and is outturning the K4 and D9s. Another nice thing is that the aircraft has a huge variety of options for ground attack. Bombs, rockets and plenty of ammo for strafing. And carrying all that stuff feels very effortless in the 38, making the aircraft more useful for ground attack than the 47 in my opinion. However, the 38 has some major drawbacks and the most apparent one is the lack of speed. The 38 is even slower than the G14 at most altitudes and all other German fighters. Even the A8 is faster up to 6000 meters. Another thing are the bad diving characteristics. The aircraft starts to shake early and the elevator becomes increasingly stiff even at medium to high speeds. Therefore the 38 can be easily outdived. The thin beams, elevator and turbocharger are taking damage very easily under fire, rendering the aircraft very very quickly unflyable. While the visibility all around is very good, the view below is, is not really good. A wingman is recommended to check if enemies are below you. But this is it for the short rundown of all allied aircraft of uh, IL-2 Battle of Bodenplatte. I hope you liked it and uh, I see you soon in more detailed videos. See you around. Bye-bye.